Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Max Payne 2 Game Thoughts Okay, so Vlad was my favorite character in the first one, so him being the bad guy, that really didn't agree with me. That just, yeah. I guess I get, you know, the whole, the story as it's told here, but it just, when you play the first game and then you hear that he's going to return, it's like, oh, they're going to be like allies, maybe, you know, he's going to help him out again. And then it's just this whole thing of, yeah, he's behind the whole thing. I did like that they have a corrupt cop in this one, for one thing, you know, very noir, you know, Detective Winterson, Winterson, you know, perfect name, because she's just so cold, and, you know, then she's with Vlad, and he's good to her kid, and, you know, that whole thing, so there's this kind of, you know, and, and that... Max kills Winterson, and he feels horrible about it, and then later he discovers the truth behind, you know, that whole thing, and, you know, the early reveal, you know, one of the first things you learn in this game is Max killed someone. It was a woman. You don't know who it is right off the bat. Then you complete another level or two, and <gasps> Winterson, that's who he killed. How does he kill Winterson? Why does he kill Winterson? You know, and then gradually you, you know, realize what happened, and then you finally see what happened, and then you understand, you know, the entire thing behind that. Because when she shows up and Max shoot her, shoots her, it's like she is just gunning for Mona. You know, there's this whole, and Mona's a fugitive. You know, she's a suspect in a case. There's, yeah, the, but, and, you know, it's a nice kind of, you know, both of them, but both Vlad and Max have, you know, they're, they're part of a couple this time, you know, both of them have a partner, you know, a romantic partner, and, you know, they kind of, go for each other's romantic partner, you know, with lethal intent. That whole thing, and that this one really has a proper kind of femme fatale romance kind of story. I mean, in the first one, she was, she was there, but she didn't really... If you removed Mona Sachs from the first game, not a lot would happen. Let's be Let's be honest about that. The second game, she's part of she she's part of the driving force in it. You know, the first one kind of just set her up. You know, it had it included her character and Max. Kind of maybe sort of could see himself feeling something for her. In this one, he most definitely feels something for her. You know. Granted, the character couldn't be the way she is in this if this if she hadn't appeared in the first one, but that's what I'm saying. Basically, she was set up for this game in the first game. And in this one, there really is that kind of, you know, and he, he rediscovers love and he loses it again, you know. It's that kind of, and yes, I know about, you know, the alternate ending, but still. You know, if nothing else, he comes really close to losing losing love again, and, you know, the, and the, her appearance in, you know, the fever dreams he has, and that whole thing. I like that you actually play as her some, you know, in this. That also helps to keep it fresh, you know, you're not just, you know, and, and it has this kind of, you know, you know where one is in relation to the other based on their conversations over the walkie-talkie. 
you know, the the one where Mona t t t communicates with him and he's like, ah, I'm kind of busy right now, and she's like, fine, be that way. And the other one with, you know, these are hardcore professionals, and she's like, not from where I'm standing, you know. It's not bad dialogue for one, and it's just, it helps us see how close you are to, you know, when you play it the second time, you already know what it'll end with when you're playing as, I think Mona is the one you play as the second time, you know, more towards the end. And you already know what you're moving towards. It's that kind of classic tragedy feel, you know, you, you know your destiny, but you are powerless to change it. The... I kind of liked the whole can't remember what it's called, but, you know, the, the show with the whole thing with flamingos are more fun than television. You know, the cult show that apparently got a theme park and that whole thing. You know, with where, you know, at the end you realize, as far as I recall, they're the same person, right? He's chasing himself. The guy in the show, the lead, is actually also the killer. Or he is the killer, and he just doesn't realize it. And that's why people keep calling him and say, you know, that that's why he's being chased. It's because he is the killer. You know. I like how this ends with basically every major character either dead or wounded, you know. Max is wounded, and Bravura might survive, so he might just be wounded. And if you get the alternate ending, yeah, she's just wounded as well. Other than that, you know, Vlad... I, I like that the, the... The Russian who's like an Americanophile, if that's how you put it, Westernophile, you know, who's like obsessed with American culture, Mike the Cowboy, maybe. I don't know. I like that if you if you keep him alive the first time you meet him, he's gonna fight you the second time, you know, because he has now been ordered to kill you, where the first time he was ordered to help you, you know, because Vlad needed you at that time, you know, he needed help. I suppose that's more or less it. If there's anything you want my opinion on about the game, down below. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.